I have to ask you about the uh, the book, The Maniac. There, there's this the the Hand of God moment. Lisa Dahl's move seventy eight. Mm. That perhaps the last time a human did a move of sort of pure human genius and beat AlphaGo or like broke its brain. Yes. If sorry to anthropomorphize, yeah. but it's an interesting moment because I think in so many domains it will keep happening. Yeah, it's a special moment, and you know it was great for Lisa Dahl. And you know I think it's in a way they were sort of inspiring each other. We as a team were inspired by Lisa Doll's brilliance and nobleness. And then maybe he got inspired by, you know, what AlphaGo was doing to then conjure this incredible inspirational moment. It's all, you know, captured very well in the in the documentary about it. Yes. And um, I think that will continue in many domains where there's this, at least for the, for the again, for the foreseeable uh, future of like, the humans bringing in their ingenuity um, and asking the right question, let's say, uh, and then utilizing these tools uh, in a way that um, then cracks a problem. Yeah, what, as the AI becomes smarter and smarter, one of the interesting questions we can ask ourselves is what makes humans special? It does feel, I'm perhaps biased, that we humans are deeply special. I don't know if it's our intelligence it could be something else that that other thing that's outside the mad dreams of reason. I think that's what I've always imagined uh, when I was a kid and starting on this journey of like, um, I was of course fascinated by things like consciousness, did, did a neuroscience PhD to look at how the brain works, especially imagination and memory. I focused on the hippocampus and it's sort of going to be interesting. I always thought the best way, of course, one can can philosophize about it and have thought experiments and maybe even do actual experiments like you do in neuroscience on, on real brains. But in the end, I always imagined that building AI, a kind of intelligent artifact, and then comparing that to the human mind and seeing what the differences were, uh, would be the best way to uncover what's special about the human mind. If in Indeed, there is anything special and i suspect there probably is but it's going to be hard to def you know i think this journey we're on will help us uh understand that and define that and you know there may be a difference between carbon based substrates that we are and silicon ones when they process information you know one of the best definitions i like of of, of consciousness is it's the way information feels when we <laughs> process it right yeah. um it could be i mean it doesn't have it's not a very helpful scientific explanation well, but i think it's kind of interesting intuition intuitive one and and um, and so you know, on this 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 journey, this scientific journey we're on, will I think um, help uncover that mystery? Yeah, what I cannot create, I do not understand. That's uh, somebody you deeply admire, Richard Feynman, like you mentioned. You also reach um, for the the Wigner's dreams of universality that he saw in constrained domains, but also broadly, generally in in mathematics and so on. So, mm -hmm. so many aspects on which you're pushing towards 